Hello and a very warm welcome to this Bitwig tutorial. In this episode I talk about the eKick and yeah how you can use it and what you can do with it. So let's get started. So this is the eKick and the eKick is a fairly, fairly simple uh, drum synthesizer with two, or well, let me say, yeah, with two oscillators, no, one, one oscillator and a pitch mod. So um, there is the on-off knob, the presets knob where you can select uh, uh, out of uh, several kicks and uh, bass drums. Then there is a tune knob where you tune the kick, an extra click that you can put on this uh, kick. And then there is a, a low pass cutoff frequency filter. So right now the kick sounds like that in default state. No, it's not default anymore because I wiggle around the knobs, but it sounds like that. And with the K you can um, just configure the length of the kick. So if I shorten this, like this, or very long, like this. And the tune you see in the info bar um, down below is uh, default with 46 hertz on an F sharp, but you can tune it to a different to a different note. The one maybe one one good thing to know is that in electronic music, if you want to uh, create a kick. Um, the kick should be around 55 hertz like that in, in that uh, in that area around. That doesn't mean that, that the tune has always be on 55 hertz, for example, on an A. Um, it has been somewhere around if, if you want to hit it really hard in the chest or you have to go a little bit lower if you want to have it in the stomach. Um, so you you need to test uh, what your what your kick um, should sound like, and um, this is not only the, the only parameter you should have in mind when going for that fifty four to sixty five hertz thing, because there's a pitch mod uh, too. But let's uh, continue with all those uh, dials right now. So this is the tune the the tune knob. This is the extra click. Sometimes it's hard to hear even with a, a headphone. But um, it adds a little bit more clickiness to the to the sound. So it's very subtle um, subtle effect but you can hear it. And the low pass is just a low pass. Low pass cutoff frequency. So, and additionally, there's the pitch mod, and the pitch mod is like you have a um, the tone from the one oscillator, and then you have, like I said, uh, um, a different oscillator or a different um, envelope that um, controls your, your pitch from a higher level to um, the level you set up over here. So here you have um, the amount in uh, the amount you can dial in with this knob is in semitones. So if you dial in like uh, 12 seven tones, it's just an octave. Down below is the decay. So how fast this pitch is coming down. And here you can define a curve, um, how fast in the beginning and slow in, in the ending of the pitch or the other way around. So like more convex curve or concave um, curve. So let's just hear it a little bit. So it's uh, better to understand. So I put decay over here right, right now. And you start hearing. It's coming from above going down. And if I put the amount far more up.
So that's the effect uh, right now. But um, often enough, if you try to create a kick drum, you don't want to have this um, tweeting, <laughs> tweety sound. You want to have a more, not only that, or you can modulate it like that. But most of the time you want to have something maybe like that. If the if your kick is um, that long, for example, or you want to go just for I don't know seven semitones, but a long decay, or longer decay, or maybe like three semitones, and very long decay. Something like that. Or if you include the curve, for example, like this. And as you can hear, you, you can just create those um, side train score kicks if you put the amount far high and the decay like this for example so the you have this <laughs> quietsche drum <laughs> um but maybe a little bit faster so like this for example i could Put it like that. So I could create a very aggressive, a very aggressive um, side trans um, drum. And then there is the velocity. Normally on a on a kick drum, there's not so much velocity. Sometimes you need it, so it's good. This um, this option is there, and then for sure the output. And you have the FX container where you can put in some FX and uh, some effect. And some one effect I would um, you recommend to use always is, for example, the distortion. Or, or and if you um, created that for yourself, I did a video about that, um, something like the hard clipper from the grid. Um, I made a video for that, for uh, creating such a hard clipper yourself. So you, you can um, create with these devices a lot of different um, kick drums and maybe you need another EQ and stuff, but these are the most, if you just use that, maybe I load the um, default preset. Okay, then I lose everything. Use the distortion, for example. And uh, I configured the distortion to do nothing when I load it, or nearly nothing. And if I um, put on the drive, something like that, decrease the decay, for example. Take away the width. I don't want to have a, a bassy kick drum to have a lot of width. And uh, maybe another good uh, tip is if you're going for loudness, if your kick should be so as loud as possible, um, go over here and put uh, this fader to zero because um, if you try to um, create a kick already over here that is loud as as you can get, you should um, use the whole headroom over here and put that on um, zero dB um, so that you can configure your, your kick over here for the whole mix. So you see, I did um, I configured for loudness and it's always also um, already distorting. And another good advice is to use always for like uh, tracks or change you want to uh, do uh, them 
really loud to use a peak limiter with a extremely short release. So nothing gets distorted over here. Even if you go like crazy loud. Like that. Um, yeah, no click or this one. Wait. Like this. For example, so that's the basic use of the e kit, e kick with additional um, some uh, effects like distortions or um, hard clipper, and always um, think what you want to do with this kick. So, as I said, if you go for loudness, um, maybe you increase here the fader to zero dB. I will. I think I will do another tutorial about the whole fader thing and pre and post fader and, and stuff, because a lot of people seem not to understand fully um, why you should or why, for example, if you uh, take a new track, why Bitwig is using the minus 10 dB and how you use that. It seems for some people a little bit too, I don't know, um, they don't get the whole concept of that, because if you don't think about that, um, why should you get the concept about that? And if you try to get your tracks loud and leave it over here to uh, minus 10 dB, there's something you have to struggle with, with because if you have it like here on minus 10 dB, you try to make the e-kick as loud as you can in the whole track, like this, for example. You, you output that and then you start um, bouncing that. And then you get in deep trouble with pre-fader and post-fader stuff. So that's just said for that topic. But I hope you understood um, the e-kick. It's a um, um, very easy device with uh, one, two oscillators. And with, um, as I said, some effects, you can do really hundreds of different kicks in every flavor and every loudness level and so on. I hope you liked that video. And if yes, it would be very nice if you just uh, leave a like. Uh, or just uh, leave a comment. And I hope I see you soon again in one of the next videos. See you, stay healthy, ciao, ciao.